review board. Uh, what I would like to do is start by introducing the members of our board as well as staff who are supporting us. So what I'll do is read the names of uh, our members and ask those people who are on video to please raise their hands uh, as I say their names. So our board members are RJ Adler, uh, hi RJ, Roger Kranz, Roger may or may not be visible, um, but he's on our board. Um, Rob Goodwin, hi Rob, Joe Kiernan, Joe is not yet signed on. Michael Lazorczak is joining us by phone. If you'd like to say hello, Michael. Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks, Michael. Um, Jean Leon. Kevin O'Connell is our vice chair. And then we are assisted greatly today by Meredith Crandall, our zoning administrator. Michael Miller, who is our city's planning director and also our Zoom moderator for the evening, bonus title. And then um, Tammy Furry, recording secretary, is joining by phone. Very good. Um, I'm just going to assume that the volume and clarity are adequate unless I hear otherwise. Um, so with that, we will carry on. So the next item on our agenda is staff review of our remote meeting procedures and process. Uh, then followed by an opportunity to ask any related questions. So I will turn it over to Meredith. Okay, I'm going to share screen and this is more for the viewers at home who are looking over ORCA um, so that they can see how to get onto the Zoom meeting if they need to. Here is the contact, the access information. Um, so, due to the state of emergency declared by Governor Scott um, under Executive Order 01-20 and its addendums and Act 92, the Development Review Board is authorized to meet electronically. In accordance with Act 92, there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting. However, in accordance with um, the temporary amendments to the Open Meeting Law, the Development Review Board is providing public access to this meeting via a video conference meeting platform, the Zoom meeting platform, including both video and telephone access options. There's also additional access offered through the live streaming of the media over ORCA. Um, all members of the Development Review Board have the ability to communicate at the same time during this meeting through this platform and the public has access to listen and if desired, participate in the meeting in real time. So you can join the Zoom meeting via the Zoom platform over the internet using this, um, or if you're watching from home and wanna listen and or comment, you can also just call into the meeting from this phone number. In, in both options, you can use this meeting ID and password. Um, we previously gave notice of these opportunities to access the meeting um, on the city website as well as all the public notices that were posted around the city and printed in the newspaper. If anybody has a problem accessing the meeting, please email the meeting moderator, Mike Miller, at mmiller at montpelier-vt.org. And if you're on the Zoom meeting through the browser access and having difficulties with Zoom features or otherwise have technical questions, you can message Mike through the chat function in Zoom. Um, he is listed as the Montpelier City Council Chambers in your Zoom window. Um, once you've logged into the meeting, um, you should have an opportunity to tell the moderator what you want to comment on here. We don't really have that problem because it's just one application tonight. Um, but if there is somebody who is on the meeting who has some other item they wish to bring up, they can wait until the other um, other matters, other business item on the agenda. I don't anticipate that, but just in case. Um, and then if you're interested in speaking, um, you need to wait until the chair has recognized you to participate. The moderator will unmute your microphone if you haven't already, um, and we'll confirm that you can be heard. And then you're free to provide your questions or comments, aiming to keep them to two minutes. Tonight's meeting is gonna to be a little bit different as you look at the agenda. 
because this is a continued hearing and we'll talk about that a little bit more in a few minutes. Um, so after you've had your initial time to comment, the chair might grant additional time for speakers who have follow-up questions or comments or if the board has some questions for the speaker. Um, but once you're all done speaking, your microphone will be muted again so that we don't get background noise that can interfere with everybody hearing each other. Um, once your time is done, the chair will then ask the next person to speak. Um, you can provide additional input later, but please wait until the chair recognizes you. A note for the public that in the event public access is limited or there's issues with internet connectivity, then the meeting will be continued to a time and place certain. And please note that all votes taken during this meeting will be done by roll call vote. All right, I'm gonna hand it back over to Kate. Very good, thank you, Meredith. Um, let's test out that roll call vote with the next item on our agenda, which is the approval of the agenda. We will do this by roll call. Um, are there any uh, corrections or modifications to the agenda from board members? Okay, in that case, I will uh, take a motion to approve the agenda as printed. So moved. Motion by RJ. Second. Second from Kevin, thank you. Um, please say yes or no as I call your name. RJ. Yes. Roger. Roger, if you've made it on, please be sure to unmute. I'll come back to you. Rob? Yes. Uh, Joe? Joe is absent. Michael? Yes. Jean? Yes. Kevin? Yes. And I, Kate, vote yes as well. The motion passes. We have an agenda. Uh, item five on our agenda is comments from the chair. There are no comments, um, no, there are no general comments from the chair. Um, item six is the continuation of 105 State Street. So I'd like to start um, by having Meredith please summarize the status of the application. Okay, so we actually have a new few new faces from the last portion of this hearing at the last meeting. Um, so 105 State Street in general, the applicant is seeking major site plan approval for a new three-story building with a commercial use on the first floor um, and, and a, the second and third floor, with the first floor being mostly bank use, including conditional use approval for a drive up bank teller and ATM at the rear of the building, um, as well as a new curb cut for vehicles exiting onto um, Sorry, I have this wrong. Governor Davis Ave. Um, the parcel is located in the Urban Center One Zoning District as well as the Design Control District. So there was a, the first part of the public hearing um, was on the application opened on May 18th, 2020. And the board held, took extensive testimony and adjourned the meeting without making a decision, continuing the hearing until tonight's meeting. I'm not going to go in detail into the full history of the application at this point. Um, it's all summarized in the staff report that was posted on the website. I know there's been some website issues lately. So if um, anybody needs that at some point, um, let me know and I'll find a way to get it to you. I can also pull it up on my screen here and share that if we need that done. Um, the, we identified at the get-go seven outstanding issues at the beginning of the hearing on May 18th, um, with the first issue having the most debate. So this first issue is whether Section 3010 vehicle access and circulation requirements have been met. Specifically, there were questions about whether there were going to be um, conflicts between vehicles, both ingress and egress, and pedestrians with the way things were set up surrounding the right-of-way. The, that's adjacent to 105 State Street. The other issues that were identified were whether the project must meet the 20 foot aisle width requirement for parking lots. So that's an aisle behind parking spaces. Whether the drive through portion of the proposal meets the special use standards of section 3115 and the conditional use standards. Whether to incorporate the design review committee's recommendations. Oh, sorry. Um, 
the design review committee's recommendations and optional changes into the permit, how the applicant um, must meet planning specifications. And we actually dealt with that, I think, sufficiently in the hearing and got evidence clarifying that question, um, the first part of the hearing. Whether the parking area must be screened from abutting properties is required for parking lots and whether the applicant has met the professionally prepared lighting plan requirement of section 3204. Again, that's another question that was, I think, resolved in the last portion of the hearing where the applicant agreed to provide a detailed lighting plan for the permit file. Um, so that's where things stand. And I think, Kate, I'll hand it back to you to how you want to handle the rest of this part of the hearing, if that's okay. Sure. Um. Thank you very much, Meredith. Um, so given the complexity of the application, uh, as you know, we voted last week to continue the hearing to today. And I appreciate everybody coming back two weeks on, spending your time and being here in the evening to work with us on that. Thank you. Uh, it helps us as a board make our decisions in a, in a deliberative and, and we hope thoughtful way. Um, the continuation is also allowing the applicant and any interested parties to submit additional evidence before the board begins deliberations. And this was previewed to you in an email from Meredith um, saying how we would handle this meeting. I'm just going to outline it for the sake, sake of refreshing our memories and for the public. Um, what we're going to do is give the interested parties eight minutes to present new evidence and then the applicants eight minutes to present new evidence. And the emphasis here is on new evidence. Uh, if testimony begins to, to tread old ground from, from last week, I'll, I'll send you a signal and ask you to, to conclude or move on um, to another point. And I would also re uh, remind you to please address the board directly with your testimony uh, rather than each other. Um, I will keep track and I will I'll try and do the timer on my phone and I can give you a one minute um, when you, if you hit seven minutes that, you, that you've got one to go. And that'll keep us all on track. Um, after we hear the, any additional evidence from the applicant and any interested parties, um, the board is going to enter into a virtual deliberative session. We will all be, board members and staff will be exiting this Zoom call and disappearing to another one. Um, it, it will be a separate call. The call we are on together right now will remain open. So you can take a break, um, stretch, the call will remain open and um, come back when you hear us start talking again. Um, I don't know at the moment how long that will be, but I hope we can communicate that in some way so that, so that you have a general sense of it. Um, at the point when we conclude the deliberative session, we'll return to this meeting. And at that point, we'll ask any additional clarifying questions that we need or we'll go ahead with a motion. So that is what to expect from tonight's meeting. Are there, it's a little different than what we've done and certainly a little different than what we've done remotely. Does anyone have any, any quick questions about what lies ahead in that regard? Okay. Um, so before we hear from interested parties and the applicant with any additional evidence, um, first I want to ask if any DRB members have conducted site visits, and if you have, could you please share with us any any observations that you want to to enter into the conversation? I made an extra visit to the site, and I also uh, reviewed the uh, presentation to the design review uh, committee uh, a few weeks ago. Okay. Thank you. Has anyone else made a site visit? Jean? Go ahead and unmute if you would. Yes, I also made a second site visit and um, found some inabilities to drive around as proposed in a large vehicle which is what I use uh, for work is a four-door F-150 truck. I mean, so to cut around that corner would take uh, basically a three-point turn or unfortunately going into part of the ATM adjacent to the other building, part of the um, shared driveway. But we could talk about it further. I have some 
suggestions and conclusions and comparison and notes that I I could I could talk about it now or, or later. Um, Meredith, could you please advise on when the best point is to to talk about information gathered? I think we would say sort of opinions or reflections for the deliberative session. But um, Meredith, could you advise on how best to incorporate Jean's evidence? Um, I mean, right now is when we're supposed to be disclosing those items. So I think especially if we're going to be giving applicants and other parties and a, a chance to talk before the deliberative session that members should probably make those points now so that there's a chance for them to for those points to be responded to if needed before the deliberative session mike if you agree disagree or anything speak up but that's my thought on how that's best could be best handled and most efficiently okay that that makes sense to me Jean. if you would um Maybe do your best to take sure. five minutes or less and, and share with us your um, site visit information. Well, regarding the parking, the three proposed parking, um, I think there was enough evidence provided by engineering um, in their presentation um, that, that seemed in the comparison to the previous business that there would be enough room as they presented the, the evidence with the photos and, and uh, several uh, parking spaces that were already in place for the garage. Um, that seemed okay um, from my analysis. Um, last week, there was some invalid comparisons regarding other types um, in between spaces such as the alleyway in uh, next to the copy center, um, the Trinity Church shared driveway, one way in and out, the federal building, post office. So some of those are invalid because, and I'll, I'll go through it quickly. The federal building is a federal access. It's, it's blocked. It's, it's only for federal use. Um, the Trinity Church one-way shared driveway, there is, so if you go in, there is accessibility behind it. So you could exit through the rear, making a right. You could go back the same way you came in or exit in the rear, out of the library, or make a left into the next parking lot. And so there's three accessible exits. There's a lot of flow when you go in and out of there. The the one way next to the copy center, Baguitos, that's been an issue for years and in the near future might be addressed because of safety concerns. But although once the, um, where the redemption center lot was gets paved, that's going to become another access flow of in and out. So it makes that, um, one way a little more accessible in the back to get in and out. So, um, and then my second site visit, you know, just getting, if you're in an ATM and you have to make a right to the shared driveway, it's pretty difficult to make that sharp right, you know, to stay right on that um, shared driveway. So, it, so I ha you have to make a three point turn. But there is a solution from my, um, findings is we such like these other places there could be accessibility if the barricade behind or next to the restaurant were taken out in other words that wooden fence barricade that's there would then open up a little bit more accessibility to the rear parking lot of that state building which also has an exit out to government street or back out so it creates a little bit more of a flow um so that's that's i think uh, uh something to look at and uh, consider gene but, thank uh, you i want to i want to clarify that um you mentioned taking a right to depart from the atm 
my understanding is that the drive through ATM is actually, you actually leave onto Governor Davis Street, so you'd be taking a left away from that no matter what. Oh, correct. There's correct. no right around the right, new so building. Making, right, so That's going okay. in to make a left, correct. Instead of, yeah, okay, just wanted to make sure that the direction of flow was understood to be um, counterclockwise around the new building. Right, so especially if there's parking availability, the three parking spaces, now you're on the shared driveway to make a sharp left into the ATM. That it's really difficult to do without getting into further into the, the adjacent building. Okay. In a in a larger okay, well, vehicle. Thank you, Jean, for taking the time to go and, and feel that out. Um, I appreciate it. Um, so the next thing I want to check has, has did anyone else make a site visit that they wish to remark on? CRB members said, oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Mr. White. Um, all right, so the, the next thing I'd like to ask again, before we hear from interested parties in the applicant, I'd like to ask if DRB members just um, please disclose any ex parte communications, if there were any. Kate, just a note that Joe did actually make it on, he's called in. Great. Joe, welcome to the meeting. Thank you for, for joining us. Yeah, sorry, I'm late. That's okay, that's okay. Um, Joe, I, I'm not sure how long you've been on, but we've had the chance to say if people have done site visits and to disclose any ex parte, so. Uh, yes, I've done a site visit and I have no ex parte to disclose. Okay, thanks Joe. Great, okay, so with that, we've heard from the board members. Um, Hopefully that's useful to, to interested parties and the applicants. What I'm going to do next is invite interested parties um, to have their eight minutes, starting with the 99 State Street folks. And then um, Paul Carnahan, are you wishing to speak as well tonight? Yes, please. Okay, so I'll have the 99 State Street folks go first, and then I will invite you to speak. And um, every, the, Paul, I will throw you in at that time. Um, okay, so I will I'll start my, I will invite Phil or whomever to begin and I will start my timer. Please go ahead. Thank, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, but before you begin the timer, perhaps I could ask you to swear Jay White in and as well yes. as Paul Carnahan since both of them are going to want to testify. That sounds efficient. Thank you for that suggestion and reminder. Um, very good. So um, Jay White and Paul Carnahan, if you would please raise your right hand. Uh, Kate, uh, do you swallow? Yeah. Hold, hold on, sorry. Uh, we also have John Russell on the line who, um, okay. he's not on video, but he is, he owns the property behind 105, so he owns 107. Um, so you okay. might want to swear him in as well. John, if you're planning on presenting testimony or otherwise speaking. I am. So we're okay. going to need you to Very turn good. up your volume a little bit. I'll just move closer. Um, I am. Uh, I do intend to uh, speak tonight. Very good. Then I will sign in Jay White, Paul Carnahan, and John Russell. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? I do. I do. Yes. Thank you. Um, all right. Phil, if you'd like to proceed. I will do you have your timer, you have your timer Madam Chairman? I do. All right. Please, please go ahead. Immense fire. Uh, I just wanted to, in anticipation of some of the comments that I believe the um, applicant filed with the DRB this afternoon, I received copies from the zoning administrator. I just have three simple statements I would like to make. First is that uh, in this case, Paul Malone is the adjoining property owner and under the Montpelier ordinance, he's entitled to be an interested party. The case that the applicant has cited the DRB to was a case about party status in an Act 250 proceedings, which is, it's only remotely analogous to the DRB proceeding. Number two, that ingress to the prog all ingress to the project site 
and some e egress from the project site is through the right of way on 99 State Street. And consequently, I don't think there can be any question but that the right of way has to be considered as part of the site of this project. And third, traffic conflicts on the site are an intrinsic element of the DRB's jurisdiction. And the argument that the DRB cannot address traffic conflict on the right of way, I think is just an empty argument. So I'm, those comments are anticipation of what the applicant may say later in their presentation, but I also would like to introduce the DRB to uh, Jay White, an architect from Burlington who has appeared before the Montpelier DRB many times in the past. And Jay has, we filed a letter from Jay to the DRB on Friday afternoon. And I'd like to introduce Jay and ask him to make his presentation. Thank you. Please uh, unmute and go right ahead. Jay. Jay White, after you un unmute your microphone, you can begin. Okay, um, can I ask that the uh, site plan that we submitted earlier be submitted and then loaded up to the screen? Yep, give me a couple minutes. Alicia Snow has it available if you should want it easier, Meredith. So hold on, this isn't, I've got to go through and pull the right ones because I can't seem to access the whole. Jay, which site plan do you want? Do you want the most recent one from Brian? Yeah, the one, yes, the one that Alicia sent uh, yesterday, I think. Or no. Uh, I have one available, Jay, is that the one you're referring to? I don't know that it got sent to Meredith. Okay, hold on. the timer. <laughs> Thank you, Kate. Uh, Alicia, I've stopped sharing, so you should be able to share now if you need to. Yes, that's the site plan I wanted to refer to. Okay, can, can, in, can everyone hear me now? Yes. Okay. Yes, thank you. What I, uh, I'm, I'm the architect employed by Malone Properties regarding the uh, 99 uh, State Street building, which is right where the cursor is showing there now. And what I would, I was surprised to learn that this proposal to make the right of way that is only 10 feet, six inches wide, a two way right of way because it's a one lane road. And I think that it's worked when the gas station was there to get back to where Mr. Russell's property is behind the uh, property that Mr. Uh, Lozon recently purchased um, because the bank, um, I mean, the uh, gas station with allowed for basically two way traffic, one lane going on the right of way and one lane going where three diagonal parking places are proposed. And it doesn't work for 95, or, I mean, 99 State Street, you can see that that entire uh, driveway is into the site between the movie theater and the uh, existing bank building. It goes counterclockwise around the entire property, picks up parking there, comes back around to parking there, and then can stop at the uh, ATM, which is not gonna be there, it's going to be down into the building there. That's where the ATM will be, and then proceed directly out. And if there's a line of traffic coming to use that function or coming out of that site, there's a conflict of interest if there's three parking spots uh, right there where uh, they're shown on Mr. Lausanne's uh, proposed site. And I've been an architect for a long time, you can tell by the lack of hair that I have, but I to try to get a one-way lane to be two-way traffic in a busy location with both businesses being busy is a problem. Also, this property has continuously been used as a sole access to get into and out of what has been the thrush building that John Russell owns. And to block that access with 
uh, those three parking spaces, I think is a, a major problem. And it, comp it, it is a dangerous for traffic flow. The turning radiuses, I don't think, work going in, uh, certainly without, not go without going on uh, the right of way in the wrong direction or uh, on Mr. Russell's uh, property to access the three that are on the side there, the turning radiuses just don't work to make an, a pivot of no degrees uh, around the, the building like that. So I would like to propose that we not allow the parking of the three diagonal spaces so that there's not a conflict of interest by trying to put two-way traffic on a one-way right-of-way. It's not possible to change the direction of the flow around 99 State Street because of the whole layout of the existing traffic pattern that's been there. But it is possible to simply not have the three parking spaces on the uh, 105 State Street project. Parking is not required on site. And I think uh, the main objection that I have from a safety point of view and a site planning point of view is trying to put two-way traffic on a one-way road and not having the ability to even back out of the diagonal spaces properly without blocking traffic. You're, you're asking for accidents left and right there. And even, I think as uh, Paul Cannon kind of had pointed out, backing out onto the sidewalk, I also was uh, uh, aware of that. But the key interest that I have working with uh, my client, and just as a former citizens of, of Montpelier, I've had the, the privilege of working for Tom Lozon, John Russell, and now with Pat Malone. So I know all of these, these players. They're all good people, but I think this site plan does not work for all the parties in, included here. All right, thank you, Mr. White. I appreciate it. Um, is there anything else from the 99 state folks, interested party? Hey, Kate, this is Phil. Uh, I just wanna make sure that the DRB has the proposed findings that we submitted on Friday. Thank you. We do, thank you. All right, with Thank that, I'm going to move. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't know how to raise my hand. Uh, raise my hand. Oh, um, okay, go ahead, Alicia, I'm about sorry. one minute. Okay, thank you. Um, I just, I, I don't know if they can respond immediately, um, but one thing that Jean mentions um, that I wanted to comment on is that the common right-of-way doesn't extend all the way to the state property. It does end uh, 11 and a half feet short. Um, so that common right-of-way does not go all the way to the, um, to the state property, although we appreciate some thought into other options. Um, and then I just wanted to confirm um, when the applicant speaks that the proposed plan is to have the walk-up ATM and the drive-through ATM usable um, 20, essentially 24 hours a day, not just when there's a teller at the window. Um, I wanted to check about uh, the v uh, excuse me, the ITE trip manual numbers, I just wanted to know what version. I had a VTrans data that they did drive through specific bank in 2010. And so the number cuts the allowable queuing time in about a third, which really can make a difference um, during rush hour traffic. Um, and then also just to make sure that the, the parking spaces were marked bank only use. Um, if there's intended to be for the building, then we need to incorporate any other uses in that building as part of the traffic um, use, use for that area, trying to get in and out. Thank you, Alicia. I, um, I, I think you reached a natural conclusion there and um, I hope that's the case. Uh, thank you though for, for your questions. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop us there. Um, I would invite the applicant to address those either now or in their later remarks. Um, How about later as, as part of, Sarah, you're, you're muted, but I think you're agreeing with later. Yes, I think that we'll hear all of the um, comments and then be able to address them all at once. I think it'll be more efficient. Thank you. All right, very well. Thank you, thank you, Alicia and Sarah. So next I'd like to move on to um, another interested party, Paul, um, joining us for the first time. Um, I will uh, invite you to, to start your comments and would just ask you to keep them them brief, but, but thank you for being here. Go ahead. 
Certainly. Um, I think you probably have the email that I sent to Meredith last night. Um, you can tell from that email that my concern is with um, vehicles backing over the, um, uh, the sidewalk uh, from the space that's designated as a handicapped space. Um, I think that's going to inevitably lead to uh, conflict between pedestrians and vehicles. Um, the analysis from the engineers and Tom McArdle seem to agree with it was that uh, vehicles would, for some reason, stop short of uh, entering the sidewalk and would decide to turn their vehicles before becoming parallel with the, uh, the driveway and uh, would swing their front of their vehicle around over the hatch marked area and then uh, continue to exit out the, uh, the property. Um, I just studying common sense, I see no reason why a vehicle would stop and would want to exit in that way. Standard driving technique um, is to, uh, you know, straighten your car out and uh, then, then exit. Um, there's uh, really no reason to expect someone to, um, to make this tight maneuver within this space. Um, the uh, Tom McArdle also stated that uh, the visibility was uh, was wonderful. Um, people backing out of with from parking places, um, you know, it's it's a tough maneuver. Uh, people are driving bigger and bigger cars. Um, there's it doesn't matter how slow a car is going uh, when it enters a sidewalk. A car should not enter a sidewalk backing up. And uh, any conflict between a vehicle and a pedestrian, the pedestrian is going to be on the losing end of it. Uh, so I really think it's a mistake for the uh, for this board to uh, approve a design that includes uh, the possibility of a car backing over a sidewalk. Uh, it seems to me it's the city's interest to uh, to prevent vehicle and pedestrian conflict. Uh, this would be a poor precedent in our walkable downtown. Uh, I can think of no area in the downtown where a vehicle backs over a sidewalk. Uh, there are narrow um, there are narrow alleyways as been pointed out, but there is those cars are coming out front first. Uh, I really strongly urge you to reject any sort of traffic plan that involves a vehicle backing over a sidewalk in a busy area of the downtown. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carnahan. All right, next um, interested in speaking is John Russell. So if you'd, um, Mr. Russell, I'd like to unmute your, your, your phone or device and um, please present your comments. Well, I have to, uh, uh, as you can well imagine, I agree with uh, Jay White. Uh, I agree with uh, Bill Zellinger. I agree with Paul Carnahan. And um, I just think that this, uh, this design is somehow or other uh, designed by uh, the parties that uh, think that it's a good idea for their use only, that, uh, that they were hoping that there would be no bank, uh, that uh, 107 would, uh, would close and go away. Um, this is it's just, it's just foolish. It just seems so foolish to me I'm surprised that the DRB is even looking at it uh, in its uh, current uh, in its current um, condition. Another concern that I have is that there is a restaurant in the uh, at 107. Uh, it's an active restaurant, even though uh, right now it's uh, only takeout. Um, but uh, anybody who's been in the restaurant three or four months ago. Uh, can see that the parking lot is has been full of uh, cars and trucks, and so it's an extremely uh, difficult um, parking lot to get in and out of already. And now we're trying to make it worse um, by by setting up uh, something which is barely wider than one car. Um, you know, I've owned that building for a long time. And I know that, uh, you know, that the Gulf Station that was there before created a lot of problems for, for me and the tenants in the building by uh, their um, um, 
customers coming and parking in the Thrush parking lot or in the Slate parking lot, the Queen Slate or the Poe parking lot, um, thinking that, hey, uh, I'm only going to be a few minutes. It doesn't really matter. And, uh, and then trying to uh, find a way out. Um, so, and as Jay said, trying to turn this into a one-way street is, uh, is foolish on the face of it. Um, and I, I also can't imagine that, that um, anybody's going to really be wanting uh, a, fl a larger flow of traffic through the uh, parking, the, uh, the driveway between the, the theater and the new bank. It's just, there's just been no thought as far as I can see to this. I've been sort of sitting back and, and watching this. And, uh, and like I said, I'm, I, it just, it's, it's foolish. It's not going to work. So another problem obviously is that, um, that people are going to try and get out onto uh, the, the, uh, the, as they exit uh, Tom's uh, bank, should it happen. Um, onto a street that's already narrow um, and also has trucks and other sorts of vehicles parked there, ambulances, uh, et cetera, et cetera, because it's a government building full of people. Oftentimes that's only a one lane road because of the traffic uh, parking there, uh, delivery trucks, et cetera, et cetera. And it's very, very difficult to uh, look left or right as you're going out of there. And then that exit is also right next to the, um, to, to the corner onto State Street. So there's no visibility. Um, these are my comments. And I guess if, if we're going to go further, I would just get a traffic expert to, uh, to work for me and to say, you know, um, this is nonsense. And uh, I guess that's me, John. Okay, thank you, Mr. Russell, for your comments. Mm -hmm. um, at this point, are there, are there any other interested parties to be heard? <clears throat> okay, so with that, um, I will turn it over to the applicant um, to, to present any new evidence as well as to respond to, to the, um, to the, evidence presented by others. So please go right ahead. Hey, Kate, just, just, sorry, Sarah, can I cut you off for one second? Sure. Just real quickly, Kate, um, since we are both presenting the evidence we plan to present and responding to the evidence that's been presented by everyone else, can we have a little bit more than eight minutes? That sounds that's, fair to me. That's what I was okay. going to say. Okay. <laughs> Great. Go ahead, Sarah. So, yeah, let's, I just want to, I just, go right ahead. I just wanted to make that point of clarification. We've got uh, you know, we've had eight, three, three people talk for eight, eight more than eight minutes each. Um, and if we're going to address them, we'll need that additional time. Um, mm, two spoke for less than eight minutes and one spoke for eight minutes. Okay. Well, so it's still, we can't, no, we can't please. respond in eight minutes. So I just wanted we'll to more than that. I wanted to open it up quickly. Brian's going to do most of the presentation. Um, appreciate people's comments. It's an open process, but, um, most of the comments are speculation about what might or might not happen. We do have experts, uh, both on the staff that the city has um, heard from and our own experts that have expert testimony to the contrary. There's been no expert testimony given by the, um, by, um, the Malone side of, of the um, equation. And um, I just would urge the board to remember that the, the use, the private rights of shared uses is not something within their jurisdiction. And whether or not there's going to be conflicts and people can't get in and out, that's speculation. This place has been in, in existence for 95 years. Um, these issues have always existed and people have been able to work it out. So with that, I'll turn it over to Brian to give the technical responses. Thank you, Sarah. Um, I think I will uh, respond to some of the comments uh, that we've heard so far first and then um, present the evidence that we've been planning to present. Um, so uh, in the Jay White's presentation, um, he stated that his biggest concern is that we are taking a, what is now a two-way right-of-way and turning it into a one-way right-of-way. Um, I'd just like to point out that any width beyond the existing 10.5-foot right-of-way 
uh, on the 99 State Street parcel is on the 105 State LLC property and none of the abutting landowners have any rights to use it. Um, so the only right that exists now is the 10 and a half foot right of way <laughs> for all three properties to use for ingress and egress. Um, the current configuration of the site is a 10 and a half foot wide two way driveway. Um, the current parking lot use of the site has um, uh, Jersey barriers uh, that go along the 10 and a half foot right of way. Um, and so that is the current access through that area and it is the legal access uh, through that area. So we are in no way um, taking what is a, you know, what you would usually expect to be a 24, 20, 24 foot wide access and that's two way and reducing it down to a 10 and a half foot access. That's just not correct. Um, I might just point out about the circulation around the site. Um, even a parking lot that is uh, designed bog standard to the specifications, it's difficult to drive a large vehicle like an F-150 around. Um, I drive a Tundra around for work and uh, <laughs> I usually try and avoid places where I have to go and park it in, even in a parking lot with a 24 foot wide aisle and nine by 18 spaces because it's not easy to get in and out. So um, <clears throat> while it may be difficult to drive an F-150 around the site, um, it's not necessarily what the regulations are aimed at accommodating. Um, I'm also not exactly sure um, what Gene's comment was about making the turn through the ATM. The way the site is currently configured, that ATM lane is blocked. Well, what will be the ATM lane is blocked by the, um, the Jersey barriers. So there's there's really no way to, to, to test what the circulation will be. Um, and we certainly believe it's adequate to get someone around that corner uh, and through the ATM. Um, regarding um, Alicia's comments, uh, I'm not sure what data she's looking at for the uh, um, generation on the ATM, um, but we are using the 10th edition of the ITE trip generation manual and we're using um, a unit that includes both the office and drive through uses of the bank. Um, so um, those are some responses to comments. Uh, we also have additional testimony that um, I would typically uh, hand out to the board, but since we're in a, a situation where we're all working remotely, I have it queued up as an email and I'm just gonna email it out now to everyone who's on the distribution list this morning um, that Meredith was sending things out to. I know that may not be quite everyone who's on this call, um, but I'm also gonna go through this evidence that I'm uh, sending out right now in email form. So, Ryan, um, you're going to be able to share your screen so that the public can view it. Uh, I, I certainly can. can. Uh, I certainly can. I'm. I'm also literally going to say everything that's in the email. Oh, okay. So it's, you don't have pictures or anything. No, I will. Um, but that's separate from the email I just sent. Okay. It's just a copy of the testimony that I'm about to give. Perfect. Thank you. Sure. Um, so, uh, as everyone is aware, the, the, the real outstanding issues of debate with this um, particular application are with Section 310B of the development, uh, Unified Development Regulations um, regarding vehicle access and circulation, uh, particularly subsection 1 uh, about vehicle access generally, and uh, subsection 9 regarding um, nonconformities. Um, so we would just like to offer some additional evidence into how the project uh, meets comp and complies with these section of the regulation. Um, a significant portion of the discussion uh, has been around whether the proposed development will create uh, traffic conflicts within the site. Um, but there hasn't really been any discussion around what constitutes a traffic conflict within a site that would be unacceptable to approve during a regulation uh, under the regulations. Um, there's been a lot of testimony that cars backing up out of the parking spaces are going to uh, impede access through the shared right of way and that that constitutes a traffic conflict. Uh, however, it's an endemic feature of all parking lots that when you are backing out of a parking space, uh, you are going to block the access aisle into which you are backing. Um, that is, uh, that kind of temporary blockage happens in every single parking lot that's ever been designed and 
It also would happen in a parking lot that is would be easily approvable under the, uh, the regulations, for instance, one with nine by 18 parking spaces and a 20 or 24 foot uh, two way access aisle. Um, you know, so our contention is that these kind of temporary uh, conflicts in a parking lot aren't the kind of conflicts that are um, contemplated as uh, needing to be prevented under the development review board, or I'm sorry, the unified development reg regulations. Um, the kind of conflicts that internal conflicts need to be presented would be things like designing your loading space so that when there's a truck making a delivery, the truck is blocking the access aisle. Or for instance, if you had a parking space when someone parked in it, they would block a bicycle or pedestrian way. Um, or if your site wasn't de designed sufficiently so that traffic would back up on your site and um, block an access aisle. So those are the kind of co internal conflicts that need to be avoided on the site. Um, so I just wanted to present and give me a second to share my screen. Um, just to take a quick look at a couple of other parking lots that already exist in town um, that would be easily approvable under the uh, Unified Development Regulations. So this, uh, what I'm showing right now is an overhead photo of the parking lot at the Hunger Mountain Co-op and the Vermont State College office building. Um, this is designed, uh, you know, the design of this would meet the current standards with 9 by 18 parking spaces and probably a 24 foot aisle, which is wider than the current regulations. Um, and it, as I'm sure everyone's experienced in this particular parking lot, uh, whenever a car is backing out of a parking space, uh, they in fact will typically back out to an angle somewhere in here and then turn forward to proceed out of the parking lot. Um, whenever someone backs out, if there's someone, they either have to wait if someone is coming down the aisle or they will block them and the person coming down the aisle will wait. Um, there's certainly this section of parking spaces here where if uh, due to the one-way circulation, in fact, around this uh, parking area, if anyone's backing out of these spaces and there's one or two cars coming in from Stonecutter's Way, there exists the possibility that cars could back up into the road right of way uh, in a temporary situation. Um, and I think everyone can agree there's this is a parking lot that would be um, certainly easily approved under the Unified Development Regulations. Um, you know, this, this layout also has the potential that when people back out of these spaces here, they're blocking the access temporarily uh, from the folks that are uh, using the adjacent parking lot. Um, so this is just again to illustrate that the kind of temporary conflicts that are created by a car um, going in or out of a parking space and blocking an adjacent access aisle are typical and endemic and unavoidable uh, in parking areas. And it's not no different than the situation of the car backing out of spaces uh, proposed at the 105 State Street and into the right of way that's jointly used by uh, the neighboring properties. Um, here's another example of the same thing. This is the National Life parking lot. Um, you may look at this one and say, well, there's this great long entryway here um, that's avoiding traffic conflicts. Well, that's, that's there because of the size of this parking lot. And this is there to avoid conflicts with cars backing up from exiting the site. But the main circulation through the parking lot is, is this path right here. And once again, anyone who is accessing a parking space, either going in or out, is blocking temporarily the, uh, the flow of traffic through the, uh, the rest of the parking area. Um, so I would say, uh, and uh, Meredith, maybe you could actually bring up um, the plan that, uh, uh, that Alicia had submitted one more time um, while I talk about this other thing and then I wanna- um to the if you're talking about the plan alicia just showed i don't have a copy of that that has to be alicia oh, okay um well if alicia you're willing to put it up that'd be good or if not we can look at the overhead photo to talk about it in a minute um but so the one uh potential for creating a traffic conflict that uh, exists longer than the um the, the what would be created by a car backing out of a space which again we we are contending is not the kind of traffic conflict that we need to avoid uh, would be if cars accessing the drive-through lane uh, were to back up into the uh, shared right-of-way. Um, and I, we had sent this uh, previously as a response to the TRC, but I just wanted to go through it. Um, we've calculated the traffic generation 
for cars going through the um, the drive through lane. And again, I just want to point out that uh, we did only the drive through lane because traffic uh, congestion is really only under the uh, conditional use criteria and that only applies to the drive through lane. But um, the IT 10th edition trip generation manual predicts an average of 28 trips being generated by the a bank with a drive through lane uh, in the peak traffic hour, uh, anywhere between 4 to 6 p.m. Um, and so that 28 trips, uh, they define a trip as either in entering or exiting the site. And if for a bank, you expect entering to be equal to exiting during the p.m. peak hour. So that means 14 cars are expected to access the bank with the drive through for both the bank functions and the drive through functions in, in the p.m. peak hour. Um, so some of those folks are folks that want to come and walk into the bank and some of those are to go through the drive through But even if we just consider all 14 cars were going through the drive through um, then over an hour, that's an average of four point, a vehicle coming in every 4.3 minutes. Uh, if we have one service space and two stacking spaces, we can accommodate three vehicles at, the, at a time. Um, or in three vehicles, we would expect that to be a time period of 12.9 uh, minutes. Um, and average service times at the drive-through window are expected to be well less than 12 minutes. Um, and so that is the evidence that we're presenting uh, based on the standard traffic reference um, that the three stacking spaces are adequate to prevent cars from backing up in, from the drive-through lane into the shared access aisle and creating a traffic conflict. Um, so that is our presentation on the general requirement to not create traffic conflicts in the site. I just wanted to quickly address non-conformities as well. Um, hopefully I'm not running out of time, um, but um, okay, thanks Kate. So um, the other thing that came up was the, the fact that the existing access is non-conforming and the responsibility of the applicant to uh, improve a non-conforming situation. I wanted to point out that the only non-conformity of the access in regards to the zoning regulation is its width. Um, and so um, I know Meredith mentioned the 20 foot width for access aisles in parking areas. Um, the regulations do allow smaller widths than that for angled parking, um, which is what we have here. The width is supposed to be defined by standard engineering methods and the way we uh, assured ourselves that the, what was shown on the plane was adequate for the angled parking spaces we're showing is by using um, turning movement software um, to ensure that the cars could adequately access the spaces in the aisle widths, which they can. Um, so um, the non-conformity being the width of the drive, it's not, it doesn't meet the 24 foot width required by the VTRAN standard B71 for two-way commercial drives. Um, but the Development Review Board can approve a waiver um, for coming into conformance with a non-conforming access uh, if the uh, non-compliance is due to physical characteristics of the parcel. Um, the 10 and a half foot deeded right away is a physical characteristic of the parcel. Um, we can't increase that to 24 feet um, without either getting permission from the neighboring landowners, which, um, you know, requiring an applicant to um, go to their neighbors uh, in order to fix a non-conformity isn't within the scope of the DRB's jurisdiction. Um, additionally, if we were really to make a 24 foot access into the site, it would require um, physical changes off the property to continue that access to make it available to all of the other um, landowners, or it would require modifying what the what access the uh, adjoining landowners have to the 105 State Street property. So the existing 10 and a half foot drive width is a physical characteristic of the property. Um, it's not something that we can change without changing the property itself. And so therefore we believe it is uh, eligible for a waiver to continue uh, as the nonconformity. Um, and I just wanted to circle back really quickly to the, uh, the issue with conflicts with pedestrians and the sidewalk. Um, once again, we've provided uh, expert evidence that cars do not need to back onto the sidewalk to access that, that accessible space. Um, the city's expert, Tom McCardle, has reviewed it and agreed with us. Um, the, um, you know, the arguments about what is common sense for drivers to do are, are really, frankly, irrelevant. It's common sense to look behind you and not drive over a sidewalk if you can have a, uh, an alternate way to go about moving your car. 
Um, but in any case, if, if the DRB debated what is and isn't common sense, we would be here all night with no resolution. So um, that's the conclusion of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brian. Um, at this point, um, I will, we're going to move on to, I, I do see your hand raised, um, Jay White, um, but I, I, I'm afraid I need to move on um, to questions from the DRB members of, um, of anyone you just heard from before we move into our deliberative session. Uh, I have a question. Members. Sure, uh, RJ? So uh, a few people speaking on behalf of the applicants claimed that a professional had not spoken for on behalf of um, Malone Properties. Uh, isn't Jay White an architect and is he therefore a professional that has spoken on behalf of Malone Properties and the other folks? Or am I not understanding that correctly? Um, Brian, I'm going to ask you to speak to those credentials because they're specific to your industry. And, and the, the short answer is no, Jay White is not an expert in these matters. He, his opinion is, is, has no more weight than anybody's speculative opinion on this. He's not, he's not a licensed engineer. But Brian, can you explain the criteria for expertise in this area? I would also like to hear from Jay about expertise in this area. Essentially, you're Brian, very briefly. Sure. Essentially, our contention is that, um, that Jay is a licensed architect and not a licensed civil engineer. Um, and architects are licensed to design and stamp plans for buildings, whereas civil engineers are licensed to design and stamp uh, site and infrastructure type work. Thank you. Uh, Jay White. Thank you for the clarification. If you'd like to unmute, please, um, Jay White. If you'd like to speak, Mr. White, um, we'll need you to unmute. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, yes, I, uh, I have been asked before to be an expert witness, ironically, on the same property when the, uh, a van I think when the uh, convenience store was trying to consider some changes around this property. And the city of Montpelier asked, actually asked me to be their expert witness regarding that. I disagree that architects do not have training in site planning. We certainly do. And I'm surprised that the comment about a, a, a diagonal parking working on narrow, narrower lane, yes, it works at nine feet because it's one way. But as soon as you make it two way, but you don't allow for the width of two way, you, you, be, you end up in a head on resolution. If, if there's uh, customers coming out of the bank drive up window at 99 State Street and they want to exit and there's cars coming into the other direction in the same width, there's no way to get around. It could be resolved by just eliminating the three parking spaces or making all of the traffic go south on the one way road. Then the diagonal parking would sorry, work. I need, I need to in, I'm way. sorry, if, I, I'm going to interrupt you. I apologize. Um, I want to stick to the stick to the topic at hand regarding expertise. Um, hey. So appreciate your desire to have a rebuttal. Yes, Alicia Meredith. Uh, when I have oh. an opportunity, Alicia would like to speak. Okay, at this point, we've actually, we've I'm, heard the I'm testimony that we're going to hear. Okay. 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 Alicia okay. has selected because of the expert, expert yeah. testimony issue. That was the only thing. I just wanted to say, Thank I am you. a registered professional engineer in the state of Vermont, and I did not reiterate or re-say re the other comments that people have already spoken. They were choosing to kind of um, speak on their, their, what they felt comfortable with, Many of the comments I would have said, but I didn't feel the need to say the exact same thing um, over and over and over again. So, okay, thank you for that clarification, Alicia. And I'm sorry I interrupted you when you were trying to make a, a point that was germane. I'm I'm glad you said that. Thank you. All right, um, Kevin. I'd just like to ask the applicant, have you considered any other configurations rather other than the one that was submitted on, uh, I think it was May 4th, the May 4th meeting? Was this this exact, this is exactly the same configuration. You, you're not presenting uh, any other configuration. Am I correct in that statement? 
I'll let either Tom or Brian respond to that, but I think that the criteria have been exhaustively addressed and your, your city engineer agrees that we've met the criteria and we've provided professional expert that, that's not my que that that's do. not my question. My question is very yes or no. Did you consider other configurations? Tom, do you want to answer that or Brian? We testified to that at the last hearing and the answer is yes. I you can you recall the testimony, sir? Of course. Okay. You, you're, Thank you. You're ju just suggesting you haven't for this meeting today you haven't considered any other alternative than what was submitted on May 4th? No, we haven't. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, Joe. I have a question, uh, kind of a more general question, but if a board member did have a suggestion, would that be best presented now or in the deliberative session? I would prefer that we discuss that in the deliberative session. Um, okay. Meredith, I would take your your advice and experience on this too um it's, yeah it's it's just a you know the drb isn't really supposed to be in this in the shoes of redesigning the project okay i understand that okay yeah okay. I, I do think other I, oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. um i don't know if you're just sticking with drb questions at this point just so that you know if you get down there that i don't know if phil had a question or if he had a response to something at some point or if you're entertaining that at all I wanted to kind of keep it to DRB questions um, so that we don't get into a back and forth. Thank you. Um, it, it, thank you. DRB members, additional questions. Um, I have a question. It's actually not related to access and circulation. So if anyone else wants to go first. To, um, <laughs> uh, Please mix it up for us, Rob. Okay. All right. So uh, as proposed, um, um, I just, well, should have said earlier, I just wanted to keep it together. I noticed uh, granite curbing um, on my site visit. Um, the site plan is, I think I see proposed concrete curbing, but I might not be uh, correct. Um, I don't uh, know if that, you can confirm if it's gonna be concrete curbing or uh, granite curbing proposed. I'm just double checking. You know, we are, we are proposing concrete curbing for the internal uh, portions of the site. Um, I think we would have granite curbing um, where we are um, reconstructing the sidewalk along Governor oh. Avenue because that would be the standard of the Montpelier um, DPW. Okay, thank you. Um, so second question is actually a question that was asked at the DRC meeting um, regarding the, um, as you're walking down State Street, the question was asked of whether the view of the uh, porch of the pavilion building would be blocked. Um, I think Jay uh, had a very brief answer to that question. Um, if you could maybe elaborate. Jay Ansel. Yes. If you were in, in front of the building, say up to the planter, you would see the porch. You could go as far back as the planter and still see the porch. Okay, thank you. All right, do we have any other questions from DRB members? All right, I know that we could go on and on. Um, Phil, could I ask as to the nature of your question before we head in that direction? If you could please unmute. You're still muted, Phil, sorry. Unfortunately, I can't unmute him for some reason. Some people have permissions that don't let me unmute them. Okay, Phil, you'll just need to unmute yourself. There you go. Okay. Um, I, I would just observe that the applicant through Brian was able to introduce testimony at the hearing right now that we've had no opportunity to respond to. And I would think we should have at least a minute or two to ask a question or two of Brian about his testimony that he just advanced under section 3010. I object to that. This is not a trial. This is evidence presented for the board's consideration and the board's to make findings. Phil is not to test it, it's, This is not a trial where we are examining witnesses of each other. I'm down, folks. And I would Relax. ask that people address their comments to the board and through the board chair as opposed to talking with each other. And that will help us stay organized um, and hopefully air as many, as many viewpoints as, as possible. 
Um, I think that the evidence presented by Brian on behalf of the applicant is similar enough to previous evidence that we can move forward into our deliberations um, without additional review. I'm going to look to staff, Mike and Meredith, to tell me if there uh, is a, a way to do that that they would recommend, a different way to do that that they would recommend as staff. I'm putting them on the Mike, spot yeah. and I acknowledge that. <laughs> Uh, Mike, I'm sorry, this is probably the most contentious hearing I've been in, so I'm going to ask, raise my hand and ask for my, my, uh, help. Uh, I was trying to think back, I guess we've got the, just taking a quick second to, see what was presented i mean if the if the sense i think it's going to be up to the up to the drb and up to the to you as the chair okay to make a determination whether or not there there was evidence that that you know, again, at a certain point, you've got to stop with the back and forth on on evidence. Either the evidence is all in, or the evidence isn't all in. And if members of the board want to hear a, a short rebuttal from the applicant, I think that would be, or, if, or from the abutters, I think that would be up to you guys. But if you feel that what was presented by the applicant was really just a restatement of evidence that was already on the record, then I think either one could stand. Um, but I think you as the chair or you as the board have to make a decision as to whether or not you think there's additional merit in gathering more evidence. Okay. I, I believe that the evidence presented by Brian this evening is substantially similar to what we heard um, previous testimony on. Um, I would invite board members to, to weigh in. I see Kevin has his hand up. Please go ahead. Yeah, I, I think that a... Uh... Uh, a time limited uh, 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 rebuttal would be would be appropriate. Yeah. Uh, you know, we could we could allow two minutes or three minutes, and I personally and then, disagree. And I think I've on. heard enough. I think we should move RJ, on to deliberative session. RJ finds it sufficient. I yes, I'm going to. Sorry, I didn't hear what you said. I did not hear what. Oh, you I said. was. Sure, I'll restate it. Um, RJ, I was saying what RJ just said, which is that he has received, believes this is beneficial. Um, I could talk about this for four more minutes, or I could give two minutes each to Phil and the applicant and call it good, and that way we've covered our bases. So yeah. I'm going to do that. Um, Phil, you have two minutes, and then um, the applicant will have two minutes, and then we will be moving into to deliberative session. Phil, please go ahead. Thank you. Brian, I, I just want to ask you about your comments to the effect that temporary blocking is normal. And I, I don't dispute that. However, in every instance, once this temporary blocking has occurred from someone backing into the right of way, can you testify as to where that car is going to go to withdraw from the site? I want to note that we've received testimony on that in the previous hearing. Thank you. Yeah, I was going to say the same, Kate. Thank you. I, I understand, Brian, but th doesn't that car then have to turn around and come out a hundred turn in a hundred and eighty degrees again? And the other examples you used, none of those cars exited the parking area. Correct. I'm sorry, Kate. Um, do you want me to respond directly to Phil? I'm I'm sorry I, I, for you to I, let me. Uh, he's a witness. I can ask. Mm, it's not a witness. This is not a trial. This is. I object to this line of questioning in this process. Okay. This is. We're gonna. We're gonna stop. I attempted to make that a fair process to include uh, both. Um, Brian was going to fair. have. His... Thank you. I, thank you, Miss Madam Chair. All right. I will accept a motion to move into I deliberative session. I don't think he had two minutes there. I'd like to, uh, I'm sorry. So I'd like to make a motion to uh, close the public hearing. 
no, 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 no. Uh, when I'm closing Rob, the public hearing, uh, Rob. I have a question oh, on the. Oh, allow me, please. Yeah, okay. okay. I thought we had to do that before going to deliver the earlier session, but that's, but, that's okay, Rob. Um, it's it's a it's a matter of process. It takes a little getting used to. We will keep the hearing open while we uh, commence a deliberative session. Once okay. we conclude the deliberative session, we'll return to the hearing. The hearing will be closed after that point. Got it. Okay, that's all right. Um, Rob has moved to enter a deliberate, uh, Rob, Rob's motion is to enter deliberative session. Do I have a second? Second. I'm sorry, who is the second from? RJ. Thank you, RJ. We have a motion and a second. I'm going to conduct a roll call um, on the motion to move to a deliberative session. Say yay or nay. Uh, RJ. Yay. Rob. Yay. Joe. Yay. Michael. I think we somehow lost Michael just now. Okay. Um, Gene. Yay. Kevin. Yes. And Kate is voting yay as well to enter deliberative session. So as I shared at the beginning of this hearing, um, you will, this Zoom meeting will remain open. You can hang out here. You can take a break. I believe we'll be at least 20 minutes. Um, DRB members, please sign off from this Zoom meeting and re-enter into the other link that was provided. Um, uh, thank you all very much. We'll see you soon. Can, hey, Meredith, can you send me the link again? Uh, <laughs> yep, you're going to have to give me a few minutes. i got to get on a different computer. I think I see you all, but I'm just going to be sure. We have Joe. Yes. Yep. Jean. Yep, RJ. Yes. Uh, Kevin? Yes. I see Michael? Present. And, and Rob? Thank you. I do that because our tiles are scattered everywhere and I want to make sure we're all together. Okay, so um, thank you all for your patience. Thank you for the evidence that you presented, um, for making your cases, and for teaching us about, about your project. Um, as a board, we've had some time to deliberate and we thank you also for giving us that time. Um, we have not made a final decision tonight. What we have done is identified our areas of concern and we wanted to convey those to you in a specific way so that if you choose, you have a further opportunity to address them. So as a board, our main concern is regarding the circulation to and within the site. We're concerned about both people walking and people driving. This comes up in two areas in particular that we've all discussed that are related to section 3010. One is um, backing out of the handicap spot and the potential to go onto the sidewalk. Um, we feel that this is a real, a real risk that could take place and one that we are not comfortable assuming with approval of the project at this time. The second area is that once you're out of any of the three parking spots, there is a need to use another, potentially use another property to turn around uh, and perform a fairly skilled maneuver uh, to do it if the drive-through is occupied. And we feel that that could happen with some frequency enough to have the potential for conflict. And while the potential for conflict, we feel between the, that the potential for conflict between vehicles is high, we have also heard you testify that even if there are encounters like that, they may be low risk from a safety perspective. Nevertheless, we feel that um, we want to see those types of conflicts and encounters um, minimized. So in order to approve this project, we will need to see changes to the circulation, which may include changes to the parking configuration or existence of parking. And the changes will need to reduce the potential for conflict beyond what we have already seen with the current design. So that is where we have landed in our deliberation. I'm um, attempting to be as, as clear as possible with, with why, we, why we came to that conclusion or, or the specifics of what we are concerned about. Um, and that is, that is what we have come up with. Uh, so it is the applicant's choice about how to proceed at this time. We are willing to spend more time on this at another meeting um, if if there is a, if there's a, a design that you'd like us, a change design that you'd like us to consider.
May I ask a uh, procedural question? There, yeah. So are you saying that the application as submitted is not approved and that you would consider a redesigned application? Or are you saying that further information that would confirm to you the safety or the criteria with this current design? Oh, thank you for asking for that clarification. We are looking, we are not looking for further information related to the design as submitted. We are looking to an alternative design that minimizes the points of conflict uh, and improves the internal circulation on the site. So are you, re are you approving the application or not? Because if you're not approving it, then we have a procedural choice to provide this information or appeal the decision. So I just need to know where we stand legally. I'm saying that the, the <laughs> that you may redesign the project if you wish to continue having us review it, if you would prefer that you, if you would prefer to pursue this in another venue through appeal, it is your prerogative to decline the opportunity to redesign the project. I think we're entitled to know whether this is is, is it approved or not approved. We need oh. to know where we stand. We had a second hearing here. You've allowed new evidence into the hearing. This is all procedurally really bizarre. We need to know are, are we to, final gonna, or not. I'm going to try and answer that question for you. First, I'm going to turn it over to Meredith. Okay. So, so Kate, just to, I think that mm. they need to know what their two options are. Oh, I'm sorry. So the okay. second, if they if they don't want to redesign the project based on the deliberative session, what is option two that we discussed? Oh, option two is, a, is, is for the board to re-enter the deliberative session and vote on the, on the project. Okay. Meredith, is that what you meant? Right, and, so, and what, you, what you prefaced this entire thing with was to get an approval on the process, the board needs you to, needs the applicant to X, correct? Isn't that how you started the whole that is correct. Right. Yeah. So I think, Sarah, that that, I hope that that answers your question without my. Okay. So is the evidence closed? Not yet. They're providing you the oppor They're providing the applicant the opportunity to redesign the project without closing the hearing. If the hearing gets closed right now without a redesign, my understanding from Kate, and Kate, correct me if I'm wrong here, is that the project, the hearing will get closed, the application will be denied, but it's gonna happen at the exact, how that exactly will happen will be in a deliberative session because the board needs to discuss exactly what that decision will say specifically. But they've, the, Kate has spelled out what the issue is and what needs to be fixed if this application would need to be, would be approved. So if we if we if we went with a redesigned application, are we opening it up to a whole new hearing? Are we going to have a whole new round of evidence and all the public come in and testify all over again? We would be continuing this. This hearing would remain open, and it would be continued um, to two weeks from now or four weeks from now, whatever your whatever your preference. Um, and it would be an open public hearing with the opportunity for evidence. So you, we'd have new parties coming in, starting out. We'd have to be constantly fielding, you know, yet more people from the public deciding they have objections to make. I am not sure that I would be able to exclude people wishing to comment on an open hearing. But you, you wouldn't be able to, and that's if that's that's part of the public hearing process that occurs. Tom. And ma'am, um, you're asking um, me to make that decision in three minutes? Yeah. We can. Uh, I don't think I would like to ask you to make that decision in three minutes. to make that decision in three Madam, minutes. Madam Chair, may, may I? Kevin. Uh, Mr. Lawson, uh, you, if, the, if, the, if the continuation is to a date certain, we are not denying the application. We are asking for a redesign specifically on the areas that are of concern to us, which are the circulation of the building uh, and its use uh, appear to us to be, to be fine. 
It's very specifically focused on the circulation. You have the option of continuing this to a date certain. It could be the 15th of June uh, or some later date. Uh, or if that's unacceptable to you, then other action. May I, may I clarify that I'm not requesting redesigned concepts in this moment? Not in the least. Um, would, if we were in a room all together tonight, you would have a chance to step out of the room and speak with your, with your, with council, with other advisors. And you can do and that. I would, now. I would be glad to, it, it would only make sense to provide a similar opportunity now if you, if that would help. Can, can we have 24 hours? Can we let you know before the end of business tomorrow, which way we'd like to proceed with this? Um, I don't think we can do that because we'd, I mean, um, we'd have to continue this hearing to a special hearing and reopen this all up again tomorrow. Well, we have to give at least 24 hours notice. We're not going to start a hearing at 10 o'clock at night, tomorrow night, um, to call a special meeting. It has to have at least 24 hours public notice. If we, if um, we, if we opt to continue or to recess this meeting, the open the open session to a date certain the applicant on their own prerogative can say now nah, we don't we, we don't want to do that and they can do that in a week we can, they can do that tomorrow uh, it might be the board's best action to just uh, recess and continue um, I move that we recess to date certain that is June fifteenth our next regularly scheduled meeting well let's like uh, let's let the chair take us to the next. Yeah. Um, thank you, RJ. Before before you make that motion, I, I want to make sure that what Meredith just um, put forth is understood by the applicants. And I wonder if it could if it could meet your stated need of not making a decision under in a in three minutes. Um, it would be more than the 24 hours you mentioned, Sarah, but um, perhaps that would be preferable. We well, don't even know if we can do that. Madam Chair, there's a motion on the floor. The motion either needs to be seconded or dies. Well, the, the, Tom, the motion is up discussion of the motion. I'm sorry, Meredith. I said that there can be discussion of the, about the motion. I, I don't believe that seconded. you've made, Would you, that you actually formalized that motion at this point, have you? I mean, a motion has not been made at this point. I right. clearly uh, heard it. Well, but no one seconded the motion, so. Oh, okay. okay. So the motion is withdrawn or dies for lack of a second. I just want to be clear about okay. procedure. Tom, Tom, when a motion has Thank been you. made, there can then be discussion about the motion. Oh, not until it's seconded, ma'am. Right. Or the motion dies for lack of a second. I do understand uh, procedure. R RJ, could you just withdraw the motion, please? I withdraw the motion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, RJ, and thank you for keeping us on the straight and narrow with, with procedure. I, I don't mind that, and I apologize for the frustration that I know people are feeling. Where we are now is the applicant has asked for more time to decide about how to proceed. The two ways to proceed are to um, redesign the project, with taking into account the feedback that has been given tonight, or to decline the opportunity to redesign and um, thus let the DRB vote on the application as presented. It is reasonable not to have to decide that in short order. Um, Council for the applicant has requested 24 hours to do this. DRB has responded that we can adjourn, uh, nope, recess, this hearing until June 15th, giving the applicant adequate time to make this decision. And in the interim, if you decide not to submit a new application or a revised design to, to, with, to, um, to let us know that as well. So yes, just a, yes, again, a point of clarification, ma'am. Yes. I do not have to, if I decide to redesign the project, I do not have to go back to the TRC. I do not have to go to the design review committee. Is that, that's my so understanding we, of what you- Correct. I do not. 
Unequivocally, uh, I, mean, I do not. I mean, we're there. there. Yes, that is correct. Uh, that's you would correct. Avoid, Thank you. Thank you. Yes, that's understood. that's the point. If if the board were just to deny it, and you were to say we're, we're going to make a modification and come back, you'd be all the way back to square one and have to go back to the DRC, have to go through the TRC all over again. Correct. So I do not a, have to do that in this session. Correct. Instance. Thank you. By, uh, by then, a then I I would to. request, Madam Chair, that. Uh, <laughs> Can't believe I'm saying this, but uh, I'll have mercy on all of you and uh, control myself for right now. Why don't you just continue this hearing? We would be glad to do that. Is there a motion to continue the hearing? Well, just, just, Meredith. Tom, do you Sorry, have- Sorry, I'm going to, yeah, I just, I'm going to Tom, consult with Meredith. Sorry, Tom, do you have a specific date that you want to continue it to? Is it just two weeks, just to make sure? Whatever is convenient for the board. And one additional point of clarification, the concerns, I guess, with my project will obviously extend to any other projects proposed at 107 or 99 state, correct? That seems likely if the other projects, okay. yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So could I, could, I just want to make sure, because Brian's our engineer, if he has, a, mm -hmm. he, I saw his hand come up. And I just want to make sure we're not committing to doing something that we need his help with that he can't do. So, Brian, did you have? Oh, I yes. was going to ask Brian. if two weeks was enough time for us internally to consider these changes. Uh, if it turns out to not be enough time, I'd, I'd hate to then have to show up at a hearing in two weeks just to ask for a continuation. So is there any administrative right. for us to ask the board if we need to on the 14th to then continue to the whatever the next meeting is july beginning of july yeah yeah you can yes. you and you can, can do that without showing up yeah you can send me an email requesting the continuation to the next meeting or the one after that so that you have time to work out what your redesigns are and you can definitely send me interim redesigns as well before you're ready to go before the board again all right thank you So we're going to continue. A motion to, Sorry, go ahead. Uh, mm -hmm. I, is, is there a motion to continue the hearing? RJ. I move to recess the meeting to a date certain that is June 15th, our next regularly scheduled meeting. Thank you, RJ. Is there a second? There is. Second by Kevin. Is there any further discussion of the motion? We'll vote by roll call. Phil is trying to say something that he's muted. Oh. Phil, Phil, we can't hear you. You're you're uh, muted. I think you might want to characterize it as a continuance rather than a recess. Um, I've recently received guidance from staff that the actual language in our procedures is recess, not continuance, despite long okay. time of calling it continuance. Um, with that question, I think um, we, uh, we and with this document in the public record, we all understand what is being discussed, which is that the hearing is being leave, left open until a date certain. So with, with that clarification, I think we can vote. Um, RJ. Aye. Rob. Aye. Joe. Aye. Michael. Yes. Jean. Yes. Kevin. Yes. And I'm Kate and I vote yes. This, uh, the application for application review of 105 State Street has been continued to June 15th, at which point we will discuss further the decision of the applicant. Thank you. We have additional business to conduct very briefly this evening, having to do with the approval of agendas, or I'm sorry, of minutes from previous meetings. Those meetings are the special meeting we held on May 13th, as well as the meeting on May 18th, of which we were all a part. Um, I'm pulling those documents up on my computer so I can see who is here who is eligible to vote. 
for the May 13th meeting, um, are there any modifications or modifications to the minutes? of May 13th. Okay, those present were myself, Kevin, Rob, Joe, RJ, R Roger, Claire, and Meredith. So myself, Kevin, Rob, Joe, and RJ are eligible to vote. Is there a motion? Motion to approve the minutes uh, from the May 13th meeting as printed. Moved by Rob. Second, Second by RJ. Second by RJ. Um, uh, of all those um, qualified to vote, um, Kevin? Yes. Rob? Yes. Joe? Yes. RJ? And I vote yes. Did I say RJ twice? Sorry. All right, um, we've approved the minutes of May 13th, and now we'll go on to the minutes of May 18th. Um, are there any changes? to the minutes as printed. I noted two changes. Um, one is that the when we had a motion to continue the hearing of 105 State Street, um, it was a 6-1 vote. Um, it says that it states that RJ voted against the motion, but I believe it was actually Joe. Is that correct? That's yes, correct. that's correct. That's correct. Okay, so, that, so that's a change for the minute. And the other change is um, just a swapping of words toward the end of the hearing when we were all tired. Um, Kevin suggested that we could close the hearing with prejudice, but meant without prejudice. And the characterization of that is the other way around. It says on page 125 of the staff packet, Mr. Dallinger mentioned that Kevin had asked to close the hearing without prejudice earlier and meant suggested he actually meant with prejudice. It's the other way around. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, right. I want to put Kevin in the best possible light here. <laughs> and Phil too. Um, okay, so those are the changes I know. Are there any others? Move okay, approval. I will, I will, Kevin moves approval of the minutes of May 18th. Is there a second? Second. Second. Second by RJ. Um, I will do the roll call of those eligible to vote. Kevin? Yes. Rob? Yes. Joe? Yes. RJ? Yes. Michael? Uh, I'd like to have more discussion about this topic. Can we go another maybe 15 minutes? Just <laughs> Mute him. <laughs> I know we mute, right? Michael. There is an open motion on the floor. I'm kidding. Um, I'm kidding. I would draw. <laughs> um, so, Michael, oh, you approve the minutes. Dean? I do, yes. Uh, and I, Kate, also approve the minutes. Um, we have approved the minutes of May 18th, 2020. Thank we you all very much. Is it? Yeah, As amended. As amended, great. Um, other business, our next meeting is June 15th um, at 7 p.m. I expect it, it will also be via Zoom. We will continue discussion of 105 State Street. Is there any other business? I'm just curious, uh, Meredith, is there any discussion about allowing the boards to convene in person again? Uh, no, that hasn't been discussed yet. Okay. I mean, they're only, so, they're, they're not even ready to open city hall to to meetings of more yeah. than okay so it's i don't know what yet it's the future it's the future yeah um because I, I don't think there's a the way for man. us to there's no way for us to keep six foot distancing in here yeah, and allow the course. public in right all right is there any other business move to adjourn all right i would second motion to adjourn <laughs> by kevin second by rj all those in favor please say aye 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 aye, aye. aye. The motion passes unanimously. Thank Adios. you all very, very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. See you again soon. You Thank bet. you. Bye.